Well, uh, good afternoon. I think we've heard a lot of talks, um, but well, here's mine. It's titled The Necessary Education, so while I am talking, just keep this topic at the back of your mind. It's called um, The Necessary Education, that is sport. So the educator and philosopher, Dr. John G. Higgins, Hibbins mentioned that education is the ability to meet life situations. Now, having said that, when people ask me what is your educational qualification, along with my degree in commerce and my master's degree in business administration, I add with great pride sportsperson and Olympian. And of course, after representing India at two Olympic Games, winning four Commonwealth Games medals, 16 national titles in 17 years, and retiring undefeated as India's number one player, I can say with great conviction that a lot of my education came along this journey. Well, while we all share this world that we live in, I think our life situations are unique to each one of us. And I believe our past was when really when the world was seemingly static and stationary. Well, our present is almost where the world is spinning, almost desperate to throw us off. Well, what is our future going to look like? I believe our future is going to be even more frantic. It's going to be unpredictable, um, it's going to be uncertain, and it's going to be extremely dynamic. We're actually bracing ourselves for a time where we are speculating what are the kind of skills, um, what are the kind of education that's going to be required to meet jobs that haven't been invented yet in, on a planet that might or might not survive, right? So we have never been more scared and unprepared in our lives. Now, this is clear that the winds of change are upon us. They are about us. So how are we going to go about combating this change? Well, the first thing that comes to mind is education, right? Um, and we're from India. When we say education, we typically think of academics. Um, of course, this in India means, you know, stuffing the kids' heads with a lot of material, a lot of knowledge, um, in a seemingly systematic manner. Well, that's not all. Today, we're also looking at conquering the cues, by which I mean not, not the ones that we curse at airports or the invisible ones we find ourselves in at government offices. It's really the IQ, the intelligence quotient. It's the EQ, the emotional quotient. It's the PQ, the physical quotient. And it's the AQ that's been added now, the adaptability quotient. And of course, the SQ, the spirituality quotient, though some of us might prefer to know, know it as the social media quotient, right? Um, so we're all looking for solutions, um, you know, to find our way in, in this ever frantic world. For me, I found a lot of the solutions through sport and around the sports arena. For me, sport taught me less about winning and more about living. So let me tell you, um, I was this very stubborn, systematic, um, you know, sort of individualistic sort of person who was very averse to change. The only way I would accept change is if you told me at the end of it, nothing would be altered or different, right? Um, I was also this extremely shy person who um, they could not even make a reservation, a table reservation at a restaurant, even if it was over the phone. However, then sport happened and things changed. And I'll, that's the story I want to share with you this afternoon. So on my 16th birthday, when my parents asked me what I wanted as a gift, I actually told them I wanted to move from Mumbai to the southern city of Bengaluru uh, to pursue my badminton training. Now, this was at a time when girls didn't leave home at such a young age. But seeing my passion for the sport, my parents agreed. I came to Bangalore for the first time, stayed without my parents. Everything was new. The people, the weather, the food. Um, when I was in Mumbai, I couldn't get up with an alarm clock. Now, in Bangalore, I wasn't ever late for 4 a.m. training session. I changed my mode of warm-up. 
Um, it actually involved me pushing my two-wheeler vehicle up the Windsor Manor slope, for those who know that area of Bangalore, um, because it just didn't have enough power to see me to the top. So that was my warm-up going to my practice sessions. And, and then thereafter, I shifted to a government training center after that, where again, it was a different world, um, very basic hostel accommodation. Uh, diet was cold food with semi-cooked chapatis. Um, there were a lot of creatures around because it was quite a wild area. We've seen snakes in the badminton hall. Um, and of course, the playing conditions, which was the most important, were challenging as well because the badminton court mats were torn. Um, a lot of times, we were told to practice when there were no shuttlecocks available. So um, I think, you know, as I went on in my career, there was a lot more adapting to do, but I did it um, because of my love for the sport. Um, I found the strength, I found the determination, I found the willingness, um, and I really found the bent of mind to accept and adapt to situations. Well, we come to this time in 1996. Uh, when I was in Denmark and I secured a silver medal at the World Junior Championships. Um, that was uh, being the first Indian to do so. Now, when I came back from Denmark after training, uh, my first training session, I was obviously waltzing onto court, had this heady, championy sort of feeling. And um, yeah, I was playing carefree, I was playing careless, uh, just to be summoned out on court uh, by my coach, who said, um, What's going on? The tournament's over. Get your focus back. Play seriously or sit out. All that elation just evaporated right then and there. Then there was this time uh, when I almost missed out on a Commonwealth Games medal due to the carelessness of my team staff, who actually informed me that my quarterfinal match was actually in the evening when it was scheduled in the morning. Um, it, was a good, it was my good fortune that my father actually called me on the dormitory landline where we were staying to wish me luck. And that's when I realized that my match was scheduled to start in an hour. Now, I had not prepared. My kit bag wasn't packed, no breakfast. I had no sense of timing of the shuttle bus to take me to the tournament venue, which was almost 45 minutes away. And I will never forget that level of emotion. Um, I was angry. I was nervous, I was feeling let down, almost cheated in a way, also feeling very determined um, to actually, you know, get over the situation. Somehow I got to the tournament venue in time without any warm-up, got on court, won the match and secured a medal for India. And <laughs> thank you. And um, I think it was just the fact that I could keep my wits about me in, in this situation where the emotions were running so high. And, um, you know, today we see success, failures, detours, some on our own account and some on the account of others, they will ebb and flow. But it's very important that the balance has to come from within. You have to stay neutral. Well, of course, carrying these lessons along year on year, I managed to retain um, my senior national title. Um, and this really came amongst various situations, right? Um, first of all, the format of the game changed as I was playing. Uh, then we had different opponents uh, who had different strategies. Uh, you know, I had the pressure of being the underdog at certain times, being the favorite at others. And, um, you know, at a time where, you know, we've dealt with opponents who were blatantly cheating. Uh, sometimes being so unwell that I couldn't even sustain a pre-match warm-up, but you still managed to go on and win. And at the end of it all, I did win my nine consecutive senior national singles titles um, in a row, equaling the record of my mentor and idol, the legendary Padmashi Prakash Padukon. So through all this, it was really about chasing excellence. I was my own competition. I wanted to be better than I was yesterday. And um, it was really about approaching excellence with a touch of my own creativity. Well, and then more change happened. 
I um, actually forced change upon myself, got myself out of my comfort zone. Now I had a lot more talking to do, right? Um, I had to talk right from the washerman to the airline staff to the Queen of England even, who we met at an event during the Commonwealth Games. Once I became a little more comfortable uh, speaking, for me, the early days speaking to more than two people at the same time was a crowd. Well, things had changed. Also being a very individualistic person, um, I had to play on a lot of teams as I was representing India. So the team spirit was extremely important. And then um, a year before my last nationals um, that I played, my wrist had become extremely painful. In fact, um, the doctors couldn't diagnose it well enough, um, which means they couldn't treat it well enough. Um, my wrist had become so painful that at times I couldn't even hold up a cup of tea or a toothbrush even. And it was this when I realized the importance of my squad, by which I mean my parents and my family who were far away from me, but they made things comfortable for me and kept my motivation high. My friends in the hostel who in fact helped me with the daily chores, they drove me to practice sessions and back. Um, they set up my weights in the gym. Um, they even combed my hair on certain, situ in, on certain occasions. And then, of course, there was my coach who rejigged my entire training schedule because by then I was able to practice only one session in a week. My physio, in fact, went out of her way to research different ways of healing me. And uh, I clearly remember the last session before my tournament started, she said, um, you know, Aparna, I don't think you're going to be able to play this tournament. Well, not only did I play the tournament, but I actually won it, setting the record. It's, okay. You know, it's, it's a mystery how that happened, um, because the pain and the acute pain, in fact, came back the very next day. But it's that time when I realized that Anything is possible if you work in a team. And in today's day and age where expectations, where pressures and competition is so high, it's just going to be an advantage if we learn to actually work together and collaborate. And you actually have people supporting you right from your core squad to your community and beyond. That's always going to be an advantage. Right. Um, so we all know that sports is unscripted. Um, things change very fast in sport and they're constantly changing, right? So just to give you an example, the typical reaction time in badminton um, is between 0.2 to 0.3 seconds. And uh, we've seen smash speeds going as far as um, 420 kilometers per hour. Just to compare tennis, six foot 10 American ace, John Isner has hit um, a serve at about 253 kilometers per hour, Shoei Bakhtar, Brett Lee Bowl at 161 kilometers per hour. Having said this, um, you know, we sports people have learned to be mindful because when an object is coming at you at these speeds, there's not much else that you can think about. Well, but you need to do a lot of thinking because you need to take the right decision at the right time and then have your muscles react with your mind. Uh, let me tell you where this quality once played out. So. I was taking my then seven month old daughter out for a stroll um, in the lane behind our apartment. And um, my house helps two children age five and seven, they joined us. And as we were walking, we saw this huge dog coming charging at us. I literally froze. But in that fraction of a second, I actually pushed the two older kids into a bungalow compound to my right and yelled at them to shut the gate. I didn't have enough time to push the stroller through so I turned the stroller um, in such a way that my daughter's face was facing the bushes and couldn't be seen. Now I stood exposed, but it was okay. As long as the kids were safe, I could have handled the situation. It was just luckily that at that point, a car drove into the lane and the dog got distracted and stopped bounding. And now when I look back, I think it was just this quality of being mindful, of being alert of the present situation, of actually taking the right decision under pressure that really helped me. Right? Um, yeah, so they say education is not merely the accumulation of knowledge, but it's the formation of character. 
And I believe that through my journey, um, I retired in 2006, uh, which was hard, uh, hard enough, but that when I came back to Mumbai to home, I realized my maternal grandmother was very terminally ill. I got three months to spend with her before she passed away. So it was also a time I suffered a relationship breakup and also realized that my dad's business had hit rock bottom. Now it was very easy for me to feel bitter um, about the situation because considering the current achievements and advancements in sport, um, the fame and money that I had earned then um, wasn't good enough. Um, I looked around, I saw friends in corporate jobs, um, I saw them in interesting professions, and uh, you know, I, I just didn't know what to do because um, I, I seemed, I, or I felt helpless and felt all the sacrifice and all the hard work and everything had gone to waste. But it was not so because I turned to the lessons that I'd learned from sport to keep me going, right? And I believe till today, these are the traits and the lessons that have helped me and, and carried me through. So when I think back my life situation, which started from having a single-minded focus on the sport of badminton, to then winning nine consecutive national singles titles, to now being a single mom, I think these are really the character traits that have helped me and held me in good stead. And I believe that if me can, then you can too, right? Um, yes, the world is changing. Uh, things are extremely dynamic. Uh, but it's really not the skills that are going to hold us in good stead going forward, but the character traits that we learn along our journey. One might argue and say that you, these character traits can be developed in a non-sporting atmosphere. Well, perhaps they can. But I feel that there's perhaps no one forum that can teach you all this together and naturally and give you constant opportunities to learn and put it to practice. So while we're talking about education, while we cannot con control the external factors, we can control what's within. Let us have an education that helps us develop inside out. And in today's world, that is the necessary education that we're talking about. And that necessary education is sport. Thank you so much.